Lunar Matrix Session Starseed Client Session Transcript Excerpt So in completing and coming into a cycle of completion today, what we're understanding is that a part of the challenge that we have, and also have in the grids that are being operated on planet Earth, that have been used to distort masculine and feminine and create splits in gender levels, have been operating in, I want to say, wrongly positioned or reversal aligned or wrong trajectories. It's like a trajectory relationship between sun and moon. And what I'm understanding is that in your recent relationship you've been working with those particular imprints, which were based upon lunar relationships. And ultimately a part of creating a pathway and a segue for the aurora to work with the lunar matrix to change the trajectory of what has been abused in the relationship to the earth and the sun. So it's like we're understanding the trinity between the sun, the moon, and the earth. And that there are rotations, meaning the rotational axis of planet earth, and its relationship to sun and moon placement, have something to do with masculine and feminine principles. What we are understanding is that certain grid networks on planet earth, such as these NRG grids and these circulatory systems like the Michael Mary Matrix and things like this, also distort the electron field, and they change the way the horizontal basis of time is experienced on this planet. It has also impacted magnetic fields and alignments to stellar bodies. What we are now understanding is that a part of the gateways that we are holding for Aurora, transharmonic gateways and the Aurora bridging projects, are about these trajectories. It means that how the sun and moon are related to the earth actually had an impact that was designed to separate male and female energy. So it's saying that anything magnetic, what we are understanding is that the reptilian basis of mind control in distorting the planet also impacted the lunar relationship to the earth, which is the moon. If we understand the moon is also a part of the feminine, and the watery, and how it actually is a part of the emotions of the planet and of us. It is understanding it's a part of us, and it has an impact on us. Even though looking at it this way seems sort of impersonal and large, like how could this really impact me but actually it does. It impacts our planet and our species because what has happened is the reptilian basis of mind control archetypes and the structures of technology that they use to redirect planetary forces or life forces or universal forces. What we're understanding is the reptilians also interfered with the lunar relationship of the sun and the moon and its relationship to how that is felt and experienced on planet Earth. So it is saying that the moon is a part of a principle that is a part of the magnetic field structure. So the magnetic field on planet Earth and how that magnetic field is generated on the planet is responsible for the level of mind control that is able to be orchestrated in the planetary body. So when the magnetic field changes on planet Earth the mind control changes, because the reptilians have used structures of architecture based upon magnetic fields. If the magnetic fields start to change they have more and more trouble with the frequency fence. So I hope what I'm saying is making sense to you. It is like saying the prison planet is held in place by a grid that is magnetic. And what they have done is they have created a structure of architecture, which uses a basis that is constant in a magnetic field, right? So there is a certain constant that is required in terms of magnetic field activity to be within a certain parameter of let's say direction. The magnetic field has a certain parameter that it is able to expand in and out. This has been controlled through the Earth core and through lunar relationships. What we are understanding is this is yet another reversal grid function of certain structures that harness consciousness power, and then redirect it as we know through distorted electron fields. Because how the electrons are moving and how the life force is running through the planet, has a direct relationship to the magnetic field activity and the magnetic pole activity. So we're understanding that the moon has been artificially manipulated. 
and on the earth has been beaconed to that level of artificial manipulation in order to create a frequency fence that is literally orbiting the planetary body. So when we come into, believe it or not, union with the architecture that we have been given through our relationship with guardian and crystal consciousness, what we are now starting to recognize is how large union is. This is so much bigger than what we thought, right, because we weren't actually thinking about planetary bodies at this level, and how the structure of harness, when we understand these bipolar waves. Meaning that we've been in a system that has been literally harnessing the body of planet Earth. And through that it created a system that could only feed in on itself. So it's literally, as weird as it is, it's a fence around planet Earth that has artificially distorted the magnetic fields, which were then systematically increased. Because what I'm understanding is that as we started to move, and move isn't quite the right word, but it's like saying the illusion of us moving through time, and space happens through the change of the actual breathing in and out of the matrix. Meaning that the movement between the particle and antiparticle field and the frequencies that were exposed to that field, and this is also relative to timeline collapse and portals opening, and the photon belt movement and the trajectory of planets. Again all of this is an extremely complex mechanics of the ascension science, which are a part of the universal mechanics of what was originally known as the original laws of God or the law of one. Through the understanding of the mechanics of these functions, which have been long forgotten. And through the access of free will of multiple beings, superimposing those different levels of a free will upon their own creations, or what they were working with is sort of the result. Which we are seeing coming to a completion on planet Earth at this time which is this level of consumptive modeling and imbalance has to stop, and is being intervened at this time to again move into the Ascension timeline, which is a part of our Guardian Host and Aurora projects. Understand that's why we're incarnated on the planet, that's why we've come here, one transcript by page. Moon Artificial Satellite we're being given another level of information, we have to let this sit and gel. But what I'm feeling is that we have been a part of two suns, and one of those suns was replaced with an artificial satellite, which is the moon. So I'm feeling that this has something to do with a change in, it's like saying that something happened down here, something happened in this timeline in this universal structure. Where I mean, I have to laugh because you just cannot imagine the thought of duct tape and spit, holding certain things together at this level. But at the same time, what I'm seeing is that we have had galactic wars that have created different types of problems in the universal time matrix structure. And what I'm seeing is that everything has to have a ballast, the sun and the moon are a good example. Because you have what I'm seeing is I guess an ascending or descending node, there are always the two that are holding a ballast for each other. What I'm seeing with the sun and the moon in its relationship to the earth was like a ballast of an ascending and descending node. It was the ability to bring a balance to the earth that was necessary from having been through a really traumatizing event, which feels like the Atlantean cataclysms and some of the destruction that happened on the surface of the earth. So what we're understanding is that after you have some kind of event with a creation that is as terrorizing and devastating as the Atlantean cataclysm, the creation doesn't just go on its merry way organically. What I'm seeing is that we had different levels of assistance, and as well some that became interfered with. But at the same time it's a most like a necessity, because the level of being able to seed life on planet Earth again was really decided to be a priority. It's like looking at the same thing as reptilian hybrids. That we have a problem with the Nephilim because they're being controlled and possessed by reptilian forces that are carrying out a negative alien agenda. But at the same time a reptilian hybrid was needed because it was a part of the building of a body so that consciousness could rehabilitate itself in a human experience, hopefully without annihilating itself. So that was really the purpose of the hybridization. 
What I am understanding is that something happened with the moon. The moon was placed there as a type of ballast. I don't understand exactly how that was accomplished, but I'm understanding that a part of it was necessary. But it feels like it replaced the stellar body that was alive. So it's like saying what we became, something really weird, we became a structure that was born of both organic and artificial means. And this is almost being represented strangely enough, between the collective soul of the sun and the moon. Which is I want to say it's an inorganic body, meaning that it wasn't exploded out of the birthing of the star, it's really strange to me. Because I never thought about it this way, but it feels like something out of Star Wars, like the Death Star. Because it's artificial like somebody built it or somebody created it. It wasn't birthed. I'm not feeling a birthing feeling, more like somebody mined it from another planet, and threw it out there or something. But that needed to be there, it was a part of I think monitoring the magnetic field. There was something about how after the Atlantean cataclysm there were certain levels of what was needed, for this body the planet to become hospitable again. Because it's like saying we went to an ice age, the surface of Earth was really not hospitable to life as it is now. So there has been a lot of apparent intervention to make this last seeding possible, and this was a part of it. Because it needed, the planet needed this level of magnetic field or relationship as a ballast to hold it in place. I don't understand it has something to do with the North Pole-South Pole and the magnetic axis. And somebody is saying to me this is why the planet is off like 23 degrees or something. I don't know there's something about the magnetic pole is off 23 degrees, talking about it as an orbital anomaly, that we have an orbital anomaly. But they are saying that that is the damage that is the evidence of the Atlantean cataclysm. Meaning that when the planet literally imploded and exploded on itself. And so after that period there was a rehabilitation to the planet. And those of us came, again these are part of the Melchizedek guardians, these were the ones that came down here, and were in the earth core, and in the inner earth, and were attempting to make the surface hospitable. There were a bunch of us that came down to do that apparently. Because the issue is, if you break off the genetic material, it's like saying we had a lot of beings that were exploded and destroyed in that. If we didn't come back and rehabilitate the loss, it is beyond our comprehension. It's like saying we would have lost all of the genetic material, we would have lost all of these god beings and family members that have been exploded into mineralized dust. And now what would we do for them, are they gone forever? I feel like there was a rehabilitation for that purpose, which was about seeding the next cycle. And when we seeded the next cycle they brought the moon in. And the moon was designed as an artificial satellite that could be controlled to work with the magnetic fields. Oh, I see. So something happened again through our history. Apparently when the negative alien invasion started coming in to prepare for the end cycle, in like 1934 to 1947, this is when the reptiles and the negative aliens started coming in and talking to a hidden government. This is a part of the technology that we are understanding, which has been used on Mars. And somebody is saying it doesn't happen now, there was a time. They're showing me that what happened with Mars, and that what was on the moon went to Mars. So there was an alien base I guess, there was something there, and it was about working with the magnetic fields. So the whole thing about understanding the mind control and artificial net, how was that accomplished, how did they put a net on the planet? We're understanding now, sun and moon, this is what happened. So something between the field and the relationship of that field between the sun and the moon, and its relationship to earth, is how the magnetic field and the logos were hijacked. Because we understand magnetosphere, right, magnetosphere is logos. So how did they do that? How did they have a way to change and manipulate the magnetic field? 
And that's what they did, they did this from the moon. So it means the moon's relationship to our planet has a distorted level or a signal. I really think this is hard to fathom at this level. What we're understanding is that a change in the magnetic field is a part of the change in the architecture. Apparently what is happening is as the magnetic field cannot operate in the same parameter of frequency that the negatives have been using to hold in circulatory systems of architecture that work similar to NRG grid and the Asian false lines over there, the false dragon lines in Asia. There's multiple hubs, we have these hubs on the planet that are used to collect energy. They harvest energy, they collect energy, and in most cases they are disconnecting people from their souls, because the person does not know how to reclaim that energy that belongs to them. And what that does is interfere with the being's right to exist in its own evolutionary pattern. This is why an intervention has happened because of this incredible violation and destruction, really to a species and planet and everything else. So understanding the magnetic field and the relationship of that has controlled or has been the basis of it. Because what I'm seeing is this, it's like you've got an architecture that is being used as a massive circulatory system that is harvesting and feeding off of human beings. And it's basically, it's like a person has no idea that they're being manipulated into a mind control matrix. When they are fed in, say they have a belief system whatever that belief system is. But that belief system has been inorganically propagated on them, it's not something that they are organically choosing for themselves. Their body becomes more robotically controlled because the flesh now is being controlled with what's in the planet. You know what I'm saying. The architecture and the planet is controlled, the body starts being controlled, this in no way is free will. Because what you are now doing is you're controlling the elemental substance of the body of both the earth and the being that is a part of it. And of course is why, is one of the big burritos big jobs with the aurora, having to do with working with elemental command. And the changing of the re-encryption of the elemental basis, of freeing all of those kingdoms along with the elemental bodies of us, so that we can start to be in our true consciousness path. So the change in this magnetic field apparently is creating holes in the structure, which is also part of our understanding of working with planetary logos this year. All of this is dovetailing into the larger project of grid work that we are working with, which is rebirthing the planetary logos there for the magnetosphere. So what is happening is that, and I'm trying to explain this, as it is very difficult to describe in words, is that you have been working your whole life basically on solar lunar mating. And solar lunar mating has been represented in every possible extreme that you have experienced. And also this would be represented again in what it feels like to me in a patriarchal relationship. Because until we become adult that relationship is then a part of the projection of our experience as what's represented in the opposite, whatever that is to us. Usually it starts with mother or father and then it's understanding that that's our relationship to mother and father of the cosmos. And then that becomes the source of the basis of our merge into union, with our partner or equal or however this is going to occur. So there has been a control mechanism that has been a part of the magnetic field, that is now being what it feels like to me, is shifted. And this has been part and parcel of what is shifting in you. We are seeing an appointment was made to remove a certain pattern that had been carried by the moon. I don't know how else to describe this, as it sounds really galactic. So this relationship to the sun today allows us to align to the moon in a pattern that was not possible before. This is a multiple level merge of a format that is being created to change the magnetic relationship, the male-female relationship, and the structures of control that have been used as a basis of separating gender on these two solar lunar forces. Because one of the forces we're understanding that has been a part of that destruction, 
is all of the female archetypes that have been wounded. 2. Transcript by page. 